Mexico City is virtually out of water. I'm going to share this article with you. Also, major cities are running out of water. A new World Water Day report says it could worsen global conflict. You don't say. How about this? Ten cities in the world facing water shortages. What does it mean? Buckle up, buttercup. It's going to get bumpy. I'm Rex Bear, League Project. How the heck are you? Let's jump right into this, shall we? Mexico City is virtually out of water. For months, scientists have worried the drought around Mexico City, which is over 22 million, would cause the city to run out of water. That day is approaching fast. There's no alternatives. Some set of essential services are also going to suffer within a few months or even weeks. There have never been more medical breakthroughs than there are right now. So why are millions of Americans more unhealthy and overweight than they've ever been? According to the U.S. Board Certified Physician and Expert Nutritionalist, Dr. Amy Lee, one of the main reasons is three harmful foods that are being passed off as health foods all over the country. And wait till you hear this, because these foods can cause weight gain, clog your digestive tract, deplete your energy, wreck your skin. They're banned in other countries. Yet shockingly, they're still legal in the U.S. And it's time someone shined a light on what they are. Dr. Amy Lee does just that while explaining how the side effects from these foods are wreaking havoc on the health of millions of Americans. The great news is it's easy to stop and reverse this damage by simply learning which foods to avoid and how to spot them. And by doing so, you can experience easier weight loss, smooth digestion, and vibrant energy. To find out these three fake health foods, go to threeharmfulfoods.com slash leak. After years of extensive study, Dr. Amy Lee put together a revealing video totally free to the public so you never get duped by these foods again. Find out all you need to know to regain control over your body at threeharmfulfoods.com slash leak, the number three. Click the link in the video description box. You'll be glad you did. Now let's get back to this presentation. The reservoirs of the Kutsamala water system, which provide about one fifth of the city's water, are essentially dry. And the only available options are attempting to take water from the aquifers below the city. The problem with that is these aquifers because of the amount of water they're pulling from the aquifers, it's causing the city to sink. There is not a large enough water supply as water is drawn from these, which are the aquifers, partial foundations of Mexico City. The, metrop the, the metropolitan area could also sink several feet a year. The city, much of it could be destroyed. 22 million people, folks. Thinks about it. I mean, wow. Think about that. Then it goes on to say, we cannot save enough water, according to the New York Times. As water becomes scarcer, other areas of the city are facing increased rationing, reduced flow, and getting water during only certain times of the day or certain days of the week. Water has been rationed to 284 neighborhoods this year and even to more affluent neighborhoods compared with 147 back in 2007. Then it goes on to say, what is left unsaid is that rationing only goes so far. At some point, it becomes insufficient, and if the drought continues, it's not going to matter much. The Mexico City Challenge is one of a growing number of parts of the world's population suffering from extreme climate change. According to the article, I will leave a link in the video description box. Here's an article from CBS News. Major cities are running out of water. A new World Water Day report says it could worsen global conflict. Now, March 22nd is the World Water Day, last month. This day is meant to highlight the importance of fresh water for life on Earth. Also, major cities across the U.S. are running out of their water supply. Just the past few weeks, two heavily populated cities in the world saw their taps run dry. Mexico City. Officials said at the beginning of March that they fear a day zero could be coming when their water system no longer has enough water to supply it's almost 22 million residents. That day could be here as soon as June 26th and last until September. What do you think about that? I mean, I remember what it was like in Texas when they were having gas shortages at the pump. Imagine water shortages in a city as big as Mexico City. 
Many people have already gone days, if not weeks, without running water in their houses. CBS News contributor says it's a problem also being felt in Johannesburg, the largest city in South Africa. Thousands of people have been lining up for whatever water they can get as extreme heat shrinks their reservoirs. Decades of neglect have allowed infrastructure to crumble. Local officials have said that if conservation efforts are not escalated soon, they could face a total collapse of the water system. Sicily is also facing diminishing water supplies. There's no water. Rosaria, a resident of Agrigento, told Reuters. Another local, Antonio, told the outlet that it was a long-standing issue. The issue appears to be escalating worldwide, and a new United Nations report published this week explains that if it does, global tensions could also rise and clearly, they're not the best right now. As water stress increases, so do the risks of local or regional conflict. Audrey Azuli, director general of UNESCO, said in a news release on Friday, the UNESCO message is clear. If we want to preserve peace, we must act swiftly, not only to safeguard water resources, but also to enhance regional and global cooperation in the area. So the water report says that 2.2 billion people currently don't have access to safely managed drinking water, and that's as of 2022. 2.2, 2022. That's half, approximately, well, it's about a third of the global population. Oh, then it goes on to say about half of the entire global population experienced at least temporary severe water scarcity. That's insane. Global temperatures continue to increase. This is expected to get hotter. Climate change isn't the only factor. Freshwater consumption has been growing by just under 1% every year. Agriculture accounting for about 70% of freshwater withdrawals and industrial and domestic uses accounting for 20 and 10% respectively. So the UN has a set of targets to ensure that water remains available. Those targets by 2030, there should be among other things, universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water. I agree with that 100%. I hope you get there the right way. From Symmetrics.com, 10 cities in the world facing water shortages. Sao Paulo, Brazil. The drought there has left the reservoir systems dangerously depleted in South America's largest city. The Cantareira Reservoir is down 7.1% of its capacity. It could dry up in July if rainfall doesn't increase. San Diego, spending billions on alternative sources of fresh water, including desolation and wastewater recycling. Remember last year I shared with you the new bill updated in California to allow water to go from the toilet to the sink? <laughs> I mean, not exactly like that, but anyway, well, I'll share that with you in a future podcast. They're spending billions on alternative fresh water. They import 85% of their water supply. Las Vegas, Lake Mead, America's largest reservoir, has been drained by 4 trillion gallons, fallen to record low levels. 4 trillion gallons, 4 trillion gallons gone. San Antonio, I used to live in San Antonio, tied with San Jose, Lincoln, Miami for their highest water vulnerability in the nation. And this is according to the 2012 University of Florida study. Beijing in 2013, Beijing's annual water consumption reached 950 billion gallons, but only 554 billion gallons were locally available. New Delhi, 1,100 million gallons a day. And that's outstripping their 800 million gallons per day available. And it's expected to grow 36 million by 2030. Mexico City, 22 million people in Mexico City. Significant challenges providing clean water to its population and inefficient water infrastructure loses 40% of its water before it even reaches its destination, like the house or wherever the water is going to. Depleted aquifers are causing the ground to sink. I'm going to share that with you in a minute. Cairo. So 85% of Egypt's water, while population, while pollution of the Nile River and a desert climate is making water accessibility difficult, farms use up to 85% of the water in Egypt. Tokyo, limited freshwater resources, 
harvesting to supply its Tokyo depends on rainwater to supply its 36 million residents with water. Istanbul, 13 million, it has shrunk dramatically. The water reservoirs out there, 22% of capacity. And that's of July, 2014, 10 years ago. This is interesting. Remember reading this last year, New York Times. Arizona has determined that there's not enough groundwater for all the housing construction that has already been approved in the Phoenix area. And it will stop developers from building some new subdivisions. This is a sign of looming troubles in the West and other places when overuse and drought and climate change are straining the city's water supplies. Look at this. Since January 1st, residents in the community of Rio Verde foothills lost their access to water after the city of Scottsdale ended their water hauling services. Since residents there lost their access to water, they have been waging a battle to have their water supply restored. Fox 10, Phoenix. So we've got a tier 2A shortage in Arizona, meaning a reduction of 592,000 acre feet of the Colorado River water supply. Officials with CAP say this constitutes 34% of their normal water supply in an average year, about 9% of Arizona's total water supply use or total water use. Wow, water, water, we need it, it's important. And it seems to be getting more difficult to find clean water anyway. And geez, I mean, you go to the store to buy a bottled water, it's like three bucks now, it's crazy. You can get the cheap water, that who knows how it's filtered in the cheap plastic containers, like the store brand stuff for a buck, two bucks sometimes. It's crazy. A lot better off just having a container, taking your water with you, filtering it yourself, in my opinion. It'd definitely save you some money and be better on the landfills, especially with all the microplastics they're finding. I just read an article that they found microplastics in people's testes. Halo! That doesn't sound cool. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. Check us out on Patreon. Uploaded two podcasts today on Patreon that are exclusives. One about the 40 days after event that took place on Saturday. It was reported on yesterday and it's being reported on today. You can watch that on Patreon. I've also got a few other exclusive topics we're discussing there. And I just did an interview with Indy, Indigo Angel. We talk about some pretty cool stuff that is available on the Patreon page. So have a beautiful day. Hit the bell, be well, and be the change you want to see. I'm Rex Payne, Geek Project. Nah, nah, nah.